All right, we're getting to the Kansas border just a few feet. I'm gonna close my eyes because I'm afraid to see what I see. I don't know. I'm gonna open my eyes. Oh no. It is true. When you cross from Colorado into Kansas, oh no, everything turns to black and white. Can you believe this? Oh, now what am I going to do? Follow the yellow brick road. Huh? What? Did you hear that? Follow the yellow brick road. Follow the yellow brick road. Maybe there's hope after all. Well, uh, I guess uh, you just uh, click your heels three times, from what I understand from the movie Wizard of Oz. Click your heels three times. And uh, it all turns to color, like there's no place like home, right? Okay, ready? Here we go. One, two, three. I think it worked. I, th I, th I do think it worked. Kansas. Look, there it is. <laughs> all right. We got colorful Kansas from colorful Colorado. Kansas. <laughs> and all you have to do is follow the yellow brick road. <laughs> oh boy, that was corny, wasn't it? <laughs> Thank you, Kansas, for welcoming me. Now I got another month of you to go. Maybe five weeks. Where's that wizard? It's going on and on. I need some water, man. Oh, we're back to these. Remember in the San Luis Valley in Colorado? Lots of these and then none in the uh, places east of uh, Pueblo. Well, now we're back to them in Kansas and it's spraying a little bit on the road. I walk through it. Oh, that water's cold, but it's refreshing. Especially at 95 degrees out here, maybe 93. Up oh, here comes Gimp. Uh -huh. Oh yeah. <laughs> I think I'll go through it one more time. <laughs> I wish I was back there at that sprinkler. It's already dried off. <laughs> These old abandoned ranch houses. You uh, wonder what the stories are behind these, don't you? Well, I do anyway. Even has a swing still swinging out front. But it looks like it's been abandoned for a bit of time. Windows are broken out. Looks like there's uh, some graffiti on the walls in there. Huh. And another one. Although this one has seen it's, saw its heyday, I think a lot longer ago than the last one we saw. Sometimes uh, these abandoned places are abandoned simply because it's more money to upkeep them than it is just to build something somewhere else, something new. Hmm. And here's another one. Just kind of standing around staring, huh? Well, <laughs> guys uh, don't, well they're sort of friendly. I guess they're just staring but they're not 
running away. They're staying away from me though because I think this is a little electric fence there. So uh, they, they know what the electric fence is all about. They want to stay far away from it. At least they aren't running away. All right, guys, see you later. See you on my table sometime. Next year, maybe. This little guy's on the other side of the fence. Can't figure out how to get, how to get back in. You're okay, little guy. I'll see you later. Oh, look, they're following me. Oh, stampede. Oh, no. <laughs> When the power pole is your only legal shade <laughs> for miles around. There's some tantalizing shade over there, but it's all on private property, so you just have to take what you can get. It works surprisingly well. I saw this guy crossing the road. In fact, I was going to try to find a place to camp over there where he came from. But I'm not going to be able to because it's behind barbed wire and it looks like it's all buggy anyway. But I wonder if this guy is one of those snapping turtles. Alright, well, have fun guy. I'll see you later. Nice sunset, huh? So I've determined I'm going to, I am going to camp up here, about a mile up here. Um, fortuitously speaking, I, um, the guy just came driving by, and he actually happens to be the rancher that owns all this land see, for about 15 miles. That's a pretty big spread. So, and he happened to know about the American Discovery Trail. In fact, uh, a few years ago, he was keeping in touch with one guy who had walked through and uh, seen people from time to time. But anyway, uh, he told me, he gave me permission to camp up here uh, about a mile down the road. And he also, uh, told me to go up to his cattle uh, pond, a cattle trough, or cattle tank. Uh, it's up here on the right side of the road, he said, about a mile and a half. And to um, uh, disconnect the hose and fill up with water there. It's well water, so it's nice and tasty and clean. All right. Don't have to drink the rest of this uh, <laughs> city chlorinated water. That's a good thing too because I'm down to uh, well, no, I'm down to uh, I'm down to two liters. So I mean, technically that would get me the final uh, six and a half miles in Syracuse. So uh, good things, huh? Uh, thank you very much, Rusty. That's his name. And uh, so that puts a little kick in my step here. Not to have to scope out a place to camp, but know where I am going to camp. All right. Well, special thanks to uh, Rusty again for uh, letting me camp on his land last night and get water out of the well. That uh, was good to fill up there. Thank you very much. And uh, so it's a little after 7. I start at 7. And plan today is to head on into town, uh, get something to eat. It's about seven miles, so about what, two and a half hours, something like that. Um, a little bit under two and a half hours. And then, uh, depending on the heat, uh, I did 19 miles last yesterday, well, 18 and a half, I think. So depending on the, and that was in the heat of the day, but it was, <laughs> it's, uh, it's kind of humid this morning. So uh, depending upon what the heat does, I'll either head out of uh, town, that being Syracuse, after I get something to eat and fill up on uh, water and 
get some food supplies. Oh, and also uh, <laughs> get something for all these darn bugs, man. These mosquitoes and gnats, wow. Crazy. Uh, so depending on the heat, uh, I may either just stick around Syracuse uh, for the day. Uh, somewhere cool. I think it's supposed to be 97. And if it's going to be humid, then that's going to be pretty oppressive. And then uh, head on out of town uh, in late afternoon, evening, and do some miles. Or if it turns out to be cooler than I expected, just uh, go ahead and head on out during the day. Um, so, that's planned for today. Ah, oh, man. So far, Kansas uh, <laughs> has been greeting me with bugs, 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 and more bugs. Gnats and mosquitoes. Can't even rest in the shade. They swarm you, no matter what you... No matter if you got repellent on or not. Ah! <laughs> ah! Maybe uh, once I get to the north side of the river, in a day or two, maybe that'll change, I don't know. Because I am kind of close to the river. Uh, at this rate, I might start running across Kansas and do it in record time. But then I probably got uh, more waiting for me along the Missouri River. Huh. Uh. <laughs> Go away! <laughs> hey, gads. Did you ever wonder what the purpose of all these bugs is for? Gnats? Mosquitoes and these mosquitoes are so big man. They're biting right through my clothes uh, Even my thick wool socks Wow <sighs> Okay Our rant is over for right now <laughs> Arkansas River once again crossing into uh, Syracuse, Kansas Syracuse city limits and uh, <laughs> still tons of gnats and then across the street here is the Hamilton County Fairground and looks like I'm actually going to miss the fair by about a week. Bummer. Well, let's see what else Hamilton has to offer, or Syracuse has to offer. Here's some interesting history. I wonder what the story behind that was, especially given that uh, <laughs> women weren't allowed to vote then. Huh. How about this? I was walking into uh, Syracuse and I came to the Syracuse Sales Commission Company. It's a cattle auction place. They have cattle auctions every Friday. So I got permission. They're going to let me take a. A couple of shots of auction going on. All right, over as you can see, we're starting to lay. Sassy down here. 
That's how an auction works. Lady Hancock and Lady Aaron Hancock. Crouchy up here, 58, 9. 59, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 8. Daughter, my daughter, 59, 9, 9, 9, 59. Junior, 60, 9, 9, 60, 50, 60, 50, you both out. It's 50, 50, 50, daughter, daughter, born, and I'm 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 born, well, that was pretty interesting. I stayed at that cattle auction for about an hour and a half. Hey. And uh, got a little education on how it worked. I was watching it there for a long time and uh, I couldn't really figure out how they determined the prices, but uh, um, basically they just, uh, they're basing their prices on uh, number one, what the cattle look like, what they think it's, if it's going to be a good feeder or not, and then number two, uh, based upon the age of the cow, whether they think it's, uh, how long they think it's going to take to get fat, and then what they think the price of the cattle on the open market is going to be in the future. So, for instance, um, there is a group of uh, little baby cows that uh, went for, I think, over $2 a pound. And so the guy was telling me that, um, based upon that, the guy is uh, the, the guy at the bottom uh, is thinking that the price of... Uh, the price of cattle, uh, say nine months down the line, is going to be X, and uh, these cattle that he's buying today, the little baby cattle, they're going to they're going to add about three pounds of weight per day as they're growing up. So um, it's a lot of uh, kind of uh, betting on the come, so to speak, that the cattle price is going to be um, so much at a certain point in time, and uh, so that's how it goes. He was also telling me that uh, just, uh, I think, in April and May, <laughs> uh, cumulatively, cattle prices weren't doing good, so these guys that were um, bidding on cattle, or, or had bid on cattle months before, they uh, took uh, like millions of dollars of losses on, on their uh, cattle things. So, uh, interesting stuff. Cattle auction in Syracuse, Kansas. Now I'm going to go uh, go to the uh, Black Bison Pub, and I guess I'm going to have some cattle to eat. <laughs> and then I'm going to go to the library, I think. I don't know what I'm going to do. It's pretty hot. I, I'm going to basically wait till later on in the afternoon, see how far I get. All right, Black Bison Pub's next. And, uh, how about that? And, uh, I gotta pay attention, make sure trade's not coming yet. I'll show you a little bit more up here in a second. All right, well, here's Main Street of Syracuse. The place that uh, they told me to go, the Black Bison, is just uh, right there, I think, on the corner. And there's a theater. They're playing Toy Story 4. Sounds like it's going to be a good movie. Uh, just as a, a tip, not a spoiler, I heard that it's kind of emotional at the end. Uh, so, so that's Main Street, and then this is uh, Highway 50 slash Highway 400 coming through town. So you got a couple uh, grain elevators or whatever going on, and. Uh, that's west to Colorado, and that's east, on down to uh, Lakin, Garden City, Dodge City, all points east. All right, there you have it, Syracuse, Kansas. So, uh, See if I make it or not, then I'll just sleep out in the in the uh, cemetery there. Uh, probably get there about 1.30ish, maybe in the morning, and then uh, sleep for about uh, four hours, maybe three hours, three or four hours.